properties of addition and multiplication. Before we can talk about the properties, we have to have two things in mind. First of all, the equal sign, um, like this, relates equivalent quantities in an equation. So quantities that are equal to each other, equivalent, worth the same amount. So in this example, this is 4 times 3 equals 2 times 6. The equal sign represents that what's on this side is equivalent to what's on this side, or they're worth the same amount. Uh, you might, it helps to think about the equal sign like a, a balance scale, and whatever's on this side, so the 4 times 3 means 4 threes, here they are, or 2 sixes, this would even out a balance scale because they're worth the same amount. Properties are relationships that remain true regar regardless of the numbers. So as we go through and talk about the, the ways addition and multiplication work, realize that these relationships or rules are true for all numbers. First, the identity property. The identity property of addition says that you can take any number and add zero to it and get the same number. The identity property of multiplication says that you can take any number, multiply it by one, and get the same number. Um, it's helpful for me to think about it this way, to think, what can I add to a number to keep its identity or to keep it the same thing for addition? Or for multiplication, what can I multiply a number by to keep its identity? And that would be a one. When we talk about the identity property, you might think about it two ways. A, someone's ID card, their identification card, tells exactly who they are, who, and this is what doesn't change at all. The other thing you might think about is you look in a mirror to see yourself, and the zero in addition and the one in multiplication is sort of like a mirror for the number. When you look back, the number sees an image of itself. The next property is the commutative property. Notice that there's no in in this word. Um, commutative, it means that changing order doesn't matter for addition or multiplication. And I've marked CO in commutative to remind you for changing order. So in the commutative property, switching the order doesn't matter. Here are some examples. If I switch around the 5 and the 3, I just put the 3 first and the 5 second, both sides are still going to equal 8. Here I have three numbers that I've added together, 6, 1, and 3. If I change the order, they're still going to be worth the same amount. Same works for this pair of multiplication um, facts. Each, each side is going to be worth 20. And here, each side is going to be worth 14. Changing the order in the commutative property doesn't matter. One way that you might remember that besides CO for changing order is that if someone has a long commute in the morning, you might have heard someone say that before, if someone lives far away from where they work, then they have to commute to work and they have to go um, take a drive across to work to maybe to a city and then they would go back. So this back and forth might remind you of the switching of numbers to re represent the commutative property. Next, the associative property says that grouping doesn't matter for addition or multiplication. Uh, let's look at some examples and then we'll go back and talk about the details. Here we have a 3 plus 9 makes 12, and if I add 8 to it, I'm going to get 20 on this side altogether. Over here, these parentheses, these lines going around the numbers, mean do this first. That's what parentheses signal to us in math. So that would be 17, then plus 3, is still going to make 20 altogether. Where I grouped the numbers did not matter. So, um, and same works for multiplication. Inside this, that means I have to do this pair of multiplication facts first. So that would be 12, then times 2 is 24. Here I do the 2 times 3 first. 6 times 4 is 24. So those are still the same. A couple rules about the associative property. The parentheses, these lines, are around different numbers. Notice here they're around 3 and 9, and here they're around 9 and 8. The in, when, you're or when you're demonstrating the associative property, the order of the numbers does not change. See that I have 3, 9, 8, 3, 9, 8. Neither do the signs. So these have all addition or all multiplication. This, this um, property would not work if you mixed in addition and multiplication within the same equation. And finally, in order to represent the associative property or use it, you always have to have three or more add-ins, that's numbers you're adding together in an addition problem, 
or factors. That's numbers you're multipli multiplying together in a multiplication problem. The reason it has to be three or more is that there would be no reason to use parentheses if you just had two numbers. Parentheses t mean to t do something first. Well, if it's just two numbers, you know you're going to add those together. So you have to have three or more numbers being added together. I like to think about the word associate and, f and friends. If um, here's a, Let's look at this top picture. If these are three friends and I have these two people associating together, that means grouping together. I like to think about it like their arms are hugging around each other and that reminds me of the parentheses. Down here the next day, maybe these two guys associated or hung out together. Either way, it, whether these are together or these are together, this is still a group of the same three people as it is down here. So the grouping doesn't matter in the associative property. Let's look at a few um, questions that use our knowledge of properties. First, which equation shows the use of the associative property of multiplication? Associative property should think you, remind you of people hanging out in groups or parentheses. And so I'm going to be looking through these to see which one uses the associative property correctly. All right, when I look at this one, I automatically see that I have a mixture of multiplication and addition here and a mixture of multiplication and addition over here. Because of that, this one is not representing the associative property. It has to be all addition all the way across or all multiplication all the way across. Here, I see the numbers are still in the same order, 12, 7, 13, 12, 7, 13, and I have the 7 and the 13 grouped and the 12 and the 7 grouped. That looks good to me. Let's look at the other two just to double check. Here, I have um, different num well, that's not true. The same numbers are grouped. We actually had the 3 and the 11 grouped and the 3 and the 11 grouped here. It's just changed the order. This is actually an example of the commutative property because it's really changing the order. It's not changing the grouping. Different numbers are not grouped. And in this one, I see grouping only on one side. It doesn't even have the same numbers over here. And this is really representing the identity property of multiplication. So this is the identity property because it's showing that 7 times 1 is just the same as 7. So the only right answer was the second one. Finish this equation to demonstrate the use of the associative property of addition. Whoops. Supposed to start out with addition to begin with. Sorry about that. All right, so in the associative property of addition, if I have to show it, I'm going to start by putting the numbers in the same exact order. Remember, the order does not change. I'm going to use the same operations, and then all I'm going to do is put my parentheses around two different numbers. I'm going to group the 9 and the 3 together, and this demonstrates the associative property of addition. And one last problem, which equation is not a true statement? In other words, I'm going to be looking for which one does not have this side of the equal sign equal to the opposite side of the equal sign. Well, I can look at this first one and see that those are pretty big numbers, and I don't want to go through the trouble of adding them, so I'm going to see if there are any properties demonstrated here. And I see them all in the same order, and just my grouping has changed. So this must represent the associative property, and which means that that would be a true statement. So that's not one we're going to use. Here, it's not really a property being demonstrated, but I know 5 times 4 is 20, and 2 times 10 is 20, so those are equal. On um, this one, oh, those are big numbers to multiply. Let's see if I know any um, properties that are being used here. It's the same numbers, oh, but their order is just switched. They changed the order. Remember, CO, change order, is commutative property. So th that equation must be true. And then down here, oh, I think it's starting to look like the associative property because I see different numbers are grouped, but there's a problem. They mixed multiplication and addition. So if I were to actually solve this problem, this equation, I would see 5 times 1 is 5 plus 4 is 9. So that side of the equation equals 9. And then on the other side, I have to do this first. 1 plus 4 is 5 times 5. Oh, that's 25. And 9 does not equal 25, so this is not a true equation. So this one is incorrect, which means it's the answer to the problem we were given.